Hello everyone, Top Hat Waffle here once again, and today we're going to continue working on our Counter-Strike Global Offensive competitive level. We're going to start texturing our level today, along with showing you some tips and tricks to make texturing a little bit easier and better in your final product. Start off by loading the CSGO SDK, and then Hammer World Editor. I already have Hammer open down here on my taskbar, and we'll go ahead and maximize my 3D viewport by just dragging the center off to the side. We're going to spend some time in the face edit sheet today. This is the texture application tool and you can open it by either clicking the icon on the left or shift A. This tool is very versatile and you'll pretty much use it for every texture application in your level. Right off the bat we see that we have a few controls but some things are grayed out. We have to select a face before we're able to do anything to the textures. My currently active texture is the dev wall with the player model on it. If I left click on this no draw face we can see that no draw becomes active. You can lift any texture off of a face in your level just by left clicking on it. You can right click on any face to apply the selected texture to it. We have a few controls for scale and shifting. The texture scale, for instance, will scale the texture in the X or Y coordinates. This allows for the texture to become skewed, larger, or smaller, though the default of 0.25 is usually what you'll use most times. We have the texture group underneath, which for this texture is 512 by 512. It'll change if we select no draw, which is 64 by 64. Most 512 by 512 textures will use a texture scale of 0.25. Newer HR or high resolution textures that are being released with Inferno and Nuke have a texture size of about 1024. Those will sometimes use a texture scale of 0.125. All textures in Source Engine must use a power of 2 value. This is 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, and you keep going. You'll have 512 and 1024 in there as well. We have the texture shift X and Y. We can click on this one at a time and the texture will start to move rather slowly. We can also use the arrow keys to nudge it by our grid size, which is currently 16. If I up my grid size, the texture will move by a larger amount. We have the light map scale. This will be used in the lighting tutorial later on, along with rotation. This is just the rotation of the texture on the face. We can use this to rotate the texture if it's applied in the wrong direction. Underneath that, we have the Justify options. Justify will allow us to move the texture on the selected face, matching the brush. Justify L for left will move the texture to the leftmost side of the face. Right will move it to the rightmost side of the face. T will move it to the top. And if I bump this guy up a little bit, B will put it to the bottom. If we click C, that will center the texture to the face. Fit will stretch the texture and fit it to the full face. This will typically result in a deformed texture if it's on a larger brush face. But if we're on a smaller face, this can be quite helpful for certain things that we're trying to accomplish. So clicking fit will make this not look that great. I'll set my texture scale back to 0.25 here, and then I'll just uh, justify it to the left and the top. If we choose Justify Left with multiple faces selected, it justifies them independently of each other. If we check the Treat as One box, it will justify them as a group. This will allow you to justify entire faces at the same time. This doesn't work in practice on this brush only because of the angle. If I used Justify with Treat as One here, it will align these together. We have our texture groups here. You'll pretty much always keep this on all textures. And here is the current material. We can see our history of past selected textures towards the top and every texture that's available in the game, though it's quite cumbersome to actually navigate the materials through this little slide bar. We have hide mask, which will turn off the red selection mask when we have a texture selected. Browse, which will open the texture browser. The replace function will allow us to globally replace a texture in our entire level. If I've decided that I don't want this dev texture anymore, I can click replace, choose a replacement for it. For instance, if I decided I wanted all that to be brick, I can just click OK and it'll replace that texture throughout the entire level. Typically, this feature will be used to replace all dev textures with no draw before you ship your level. The mark setting will mark or select all faces with the currently active texture. So if I select no draw and then click mark, it's going to select every face with no draw in the level. The apply button will apply the currently selected texture to the active face. If I select all of these, make this metal texture my active texture and then click apply, it'll switch it. Let's actually texture something over here in T-Spawn. 
I figured that this wall here would be a brick wall of a building. If I click browse and then search brick already, I'm going to use this brick wall 45 texture set. We have A, D, and F. There's a few texture sets that you'll notice throughout your texture browser. These are typically sets of materials that work together to create more detail in your level. I'll start by grabbing the O45F, which is the bottom material for this texture set. If I right click to apply it to this wall, we see that we have three stripes here. This is the bottom of the material and it should be applied to only the bottom. The only way to change the texture on a face is to sadly split it into another brush. So I'll press Ctrl A to make all my views the same. I'll hide everything that's not in this area, just so we have a cleaner viewport. Selecting this brush, I'm going to use my clipping tool to make a horizontal cut at the point where the texture repeats itself. Hitting enter to just split the brush in two, I can now select the top and bottom independently. I have to cut the top one as well, so I can make the top texture different. Opening the face edit sheet again, I can now select the 45D texture, which is the top. And when I apply that, we see that we have this molding or trim on the top of the texture. There's also the center texture here, which we can just right click to apply. One thing that you may notice is when you start to zoom away from the wall, there's a slight white line here. It's harder to notice on video, but in game, this will be more noticeable. This is due to how texture filtering works and mip maps. When you're further away from a texture in a game engine, the quality is degraded to help with performance. This is done by switching the face to use a lower resolution texture, which in turn will have more blurring, causing this bleed over on the lines. There's a very simple fix to this, and we just select all three textures, go to the vertex tool, we select these vertexes here, and bump them up about four units. And then we select these bottom ones and bump them down four units. We'll switch to the selection tool. It looks like nothing's changed because that middle repeating texture contains the same brick pattern as the other two textures. Now when we zoom away from the wall, we no longer have that white line there from the texture filter blurring. Now if we want to copy this onto another wall, there's a few ways to do this. First, we need to copy the same split marks from this wall over to the other. I can do this quickly by just grabbing the other wall, grabbing the clipping tool, and making the same cuts. Using the face edit sheet to left click to select this texture and then right click to apply it, I can just move all of these over to the other face. And now we have a quickly textured wall with three different textures on it. Most of what you'll typically texture and hammer is flat walls, so we don't need to do too much special to it. But what happens if you want to start texturing those primitive prefabs like cylinders and arches that we made earlier? I have a wall with a quarter of a cylinder on each side that I want to texture. Using the regular right click texture application tool will leave this not aligned properly. For instance, if I use this texture and just right click a bunch of times on here, we can see that the player is not aligned properly in the center. If I select this as my source face and then hold Alt, and right click on each face as I go along updating my source face, this will wrap the texture around making it look much better. While this looks good for the dev texture, let's use a real texture so it reflects real world usage. Let's click browse and do a search for wall. Up towards the top here, there is the baggage stripe with dirt. I'll right click to apply it to this face and it's a 1024 by 1024 texture. I want to scale it down to 0.125 on the X and Y then hit apply. I'll justify it to the bottom and to the right, and I need to split it in half so I can change the top to not have the bottom part of the material. I need to split this wall as well, so I'll select all of this and cut it in one go. Making a horizontal split with the clipping tool, and then bringing the face edit sheet back. I'll grab the top texture over here and just right click to apply it and set the scale. And just like the other texture, I'll just fight to the bottom and to the right. These now align without an issue. Now I just need to alt wrap it around. So holding the alt key on my keyboard with this face selected, I'll right click here and I'll do the same for up here. Once again, this ensures that the texture wraps around so there won't be a seam. Now selecting this as my source face, I'll right click here to apply the texture. I need to update my source face and right click again. So I need to update my source face constantly while I texture this. I'm holding Alt the entire time on my keyboard. If I don't hold Alt, we don't achieve the wrapping effect.
And hey, that's a pretty good wall right there. The last thing that we should learn to texture would be sidewalks. I've created a sidewalk over here in T-Spawn that kind of follows this building. I'm going to use my viz groups over on the right to turn off some unneeded stuff. I'll turn off all entities. I don't need those. I want to keep function details enabled. I've turned these sidewalks into a function detail, so if I turn those off, I won't be able to see them here. The sidewalk is composed of a few straight block brushes, an arch primitive prefab, and a cylinder cut in a fourth, much like we just textured. It then goes up this ramp and follows this curve into a brush over here. We're going to texture this using a sidewalk texture. If we open our face edit sheet, click browse, and then do search for sidewalk, the concrete HRC HR sidewalk A is the texture that I want to use. Inside this texture, there's a few sub components as I call them to make this entire thing come together. I'll apply it to the floor so we can quickly take a look at what's included. We have a gray part of the texture along with what is going to be the front of the texture and then the sidewalk squares itself. This is a prime example of packing textures together to get certain elements out of them to use on brushes later. So I'll select this and I'll put it back to a uh, like dev texture there. I want to get the front of the texture first. This is going to set my scale. I need to do this with a little trickery using my texture locks. I'll hide everything but the sidewalk and now I'll create a new brush with the sidewalk texture on it. As of right now, I'm looking to isolate just this front part of the texture. So using the texture shift, I'll scale it so I get this, just this part on the texture. I can use justify bottom or left. Depending on the orientation, you might just have to click these until it does what you want. And that does what I want. So I want just this bottom part. So I'll use the clipping tool now to figure out where to cut my line. That looks pretty good. There's two kinds of texture lock. By default, regular texture lock is on. What regular texture lock does is when we move an object, it retains the texture's location. So when I move this, the texture doesn't move. If I turn texture lock off, as I move this, we can see that the texture keeps its place aligned to the world, if you will. By default, you'll probably want to keep texture lock on. The other texture lock is scaling texture lock. If we make this brush bigger, we see that we see more of the texture as it scales larger. If I turn scaling texture lock on and I resize it, it only shows what was there before we rescaled it. It just stretches and skews it to fit the size we want. We're going to use this to find the texture scale that we need to use to apply just this front part to the front of our sidewalk. So scaling texture lock enabled, I'll just kind of shrink this down. So it's the same size as the front of my sidewalk. I can then use the face edit sheet and then alt right click to apply it onto the face of my sidewalk. I can delete that brush since I'm done with it. You'll notice that it's squished and not perfectly square now. If we click on it, we can see its X texture scale is 0.118 while its Y is 0.250. All we need to do is make these match and it's now perfectly square. I can then alt right click all of these faces much like before to apply this to the front of the texture. We run into an issue when we try to texture this slanted brush. This is due to the fact that this is trying to just wrap it continually on. We can use the top of the brush to wrap it around. But since we're on an angle here, if we do that, the texture will turn out slanted. We'll need to use another brush to get the effect that we want. So if we just create a temporary brush here and then wrap the sidewalk onto this face, I can wrap the front of this straight brush onto the top and then alt right click the top of this brush onto the angled one. Now with this applied on the angled brush, I can alt right click wrap it and we have the same texture continuing here. At the top, the same issue occurs. We have a angled brush and when we wrap it, we get another weird sort of turning to it. The easy fix once again is to create another kind of placeholder brush just to get our angles here. So we'll wrap the top onto this brush here and then wrap it onto there. So we now have this face aligned perfectly onto the front of this brush. I can then select the front of this and then alt wrap it onto there and continue wrapping around on the side. Now that I'm done with the scaling texture lock, I'll go ahead and, and turn that off. If we come down here, all I have to do to get the top of the sidewalk on 
is grab the front and just alt right click it on. Since this texture has lines in it, I want to be mindful on my turn. This will require a little bit of manual work to kind of hide these. I'll just use the arrow keys to slide this texture around so I hide these obvious repeating patterns. Then I can just continue to wrap my textures around. And when you encounter an area like this, you'll just have to make your best judgment on where you want the seam to be. Usually a little bit of manual alignment is all it takes. If you want to keep the front of the texture running around this, we'll need to split the brush. Since this was made with the arch tool, these are already on grid. We can just grab the clipping tool and make a cut. We want to make this cut from the corner outwards to where it meets in the center. And we'll just split the brush the entire way through. And now when we alt wrap it, we'll get the front of the texture. We have the same issue now before where the texture has the seams in it. So you'll notice that it's kind of a give and take with textures. At some point on a brush, you'll need to accept some loss or repetition in your texture. This can be avoided by placing props cleverly on areas where you have noticeable seams. I'll unhide the level and turn everything back on in my viz groups by just double clicking auto. That's pretty much gonna do it. Let's compile it and see what it looks like in game. And here we are in game. If we open our console and type map space the map name, we can join a team, kick the bots. We have our simple textured wall with the three textures and the molding on top. Down in the metro, we have our curved wall with good alignment since we alt right click wrapped the faces. And coming up here, we have our sidewalk with the front texture that wraps around. You can see over here, there's a bit of repeating, but if you spent a little more time on creating this yourself, you'll have a much better effect. Over here, the sidewalk just terminates into the curve. I didn't split this one, so you can see what that looks like. We have the texture go up, and over here, the front of the sidewalk is represented on the front since we split this brush up. I hope you enjoyed learning how to apply textures to brushes in your game along with the primitive prefabs that we've created in previous videos. Thanks again for watching, join us tomorrow for the next one, and stay frosty.